Attorney General Merrick Garland has assigned a Trump-appointed U.S. attorney to review the documents marked classified that were found in an office used by Biden before he ran for the presidency. Now, these materials were discovered by the president's personal lawyers shortly before last year's midterm elections. So that's the timeline here. Mr. Biden used the vice presidential office at the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement there in Washington, uh, periodically following the end of the Obama administration. Uh, his lawyers returned the paperwork to the National Archive the day after their discovery. The first person to report this was CBS News correspondent Adriana Diaz. Here she is with more. CBS News learned roughly 10 documents marked classified were found inside this former office of President Biden, right across from the U.S. Capitol. Sources told CBS News the Justice Department launched the review into the matter after the president's personal lawyers found a small number of documents with classified markings in a locked closet, according to a White House lawyer. The documents were discovered in early November, while the attorneys were packing up the office at the Penn Biden Center, a foreign policy research institute that the White House said Mr. Biden used used as an office periodically from 2017 until the start of the 2020 campaign. The White House Counsel's Office says the documents were not the subject of any previous request by the archives and that it immediately reported the discovery to the National Archives, which took possession of the documents the following day. Then Attorney General Merrick Garland asked the U.S. Attorney in Chicago, John Lausch, a Trump appointee, to review the matter and report back. The FBI is also involved in the preliminary inquiry. According to a source, the documents did not contain nuclear secrets, but their exact nature and classification level are unclear. The new Republican Speaker of the House called the discovery very concerning. as other GOP lawmakers demanded answers. Maybe the American people should have had a right to know about it as well. Um, so, but we'll have to see what these 10 documents are. It is illegal to keep classified material in an unsecured location, but sources say it is not clear whether any crime occurred or if anyone will face charges. If there was some other uh, nefarious purpose or criminal intent behind that, that remains to be seen. But this just could be a case of sloppy record keeping. The classified documents in Mr. Biden's former office were discovered on November 2nd, about three months after the FBI executed a search warrant at former President Trump's Florida home and office. That's after he refused to comply with repeated requests to return the materials. FBI agents laid out on the floor some of the more than 100 seized documents marked classified. President Biden was critical when he spoke to Scott Pelley in September for 60 Minutes. How that could possibly happen how one, anyone could be that irresponsible. No Former way. federal prosecutor Scott Fredrickson says there are key differences between the Biden inquiry and that involving former President Trump. How significant is it that these documents were self-reported, voluntarily turned over? I think the self-reporting here is probably the single most important part of this situation. Uh, it indicates a lack of intentional conduct. It's completely different from the Mar-a-Lago case. Uh, which tends, based on reporting, to indicate there was intentionally uh, activity to take those documents. But Monday night in a post, Trump asked, when is the FBI going to raid the many homes of Joe Biden, perhaps even the White House? Well, joining us now is CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson. Jessica, sources have told CBS that it is unclear if a crime occurred, but... That said, we know that it's illegal to keep classified materials in a non-secure location. So why might this not be a crime? I know, that's a great question. And I think it's partly what you just heard, which is so far the evidence indicates a lack of intent or knowledge. What we need for criminality here is that President Biden knew what he was doing and he knew it was wrong. He knew he was taking classified documents, for instance. He knew he was putting them in an unauthorized location. Another statute talks about knowingly taking those documents with the intent to destroy them. Yet another federal statute talks about knowingly and willfully taking documents to which you're not entitled and wanting to use them for nefarious purposes. At this point, all we know is that there was sloppiness, as you heard before. We don't have any evidence to indicate that there's the knowledge, that there's the intent, or even frankly, that there's awareness on the part of President Biden that he had these documents to which he should not have had them. He shouldn't have, it appears, he should not have been retaining them.
And so, Jessica, based on that, while it may not be as um, bad as the Trump document situation, this is still not a good look. I mean, as you just referenced, if it's sloppy record keeping, it makes you wonder what other documents may have been misplaced or mismanaged. So knowing what we know now, and, um, you know, Adriana continues to report on this. We could hear more in the days ahead. But what are the potential legal ramifications President Biden could face as a result of the U.S. attorney's review? So I think the way you phrase this actually is exactly right. Not a good look. That's different from legal ramifications. When we're talking, again, about legal ramifications, about potential criminality, we need evidence not just of awareness, which so far we don't even have, but we need some evidence to indicate, frankly, something like the Trump situation, where the president, uh, President Biden, was asked a number of times, "Do you have more documents? Will you give us the documents? We think you have documents to which you're not entitled." At this point, again, early in the investigation, as you said, I don't see criminal repercussions. But your question, I think, phrases it exactly right. I think it's political repercussions, and people will erroneously equate these two scenarios. They, they already are being equated. Uh, comparisons between this incident, um, and I guess the Biden documents and the right. Mar-a-Lago Trump right. documents, are being made, particularly by Republicans. Um, in does this work as a defense, then, for the Trump legal team to say, sort of, look, this is something that happens. It doesn't, it doesn't make it um, necessarily nefarious. What makes these two cases different from a legal standpoint? Yeah, great, great question. Again, so people are saying it's not, you know, apples to oranges. I mean, it's not apples to concrete. There's such different situations. In the one hand, when it comes to President Biden, the evidence indicates so far that his lawyers found these documents. They alerted the National Archives. The next morning, the National Archives were there. And that the attorney general has appointed a Trump-appointed federal prosecutor to look into this. Compared to... Uh, Jessica, Trump sorry, situation. I just want to pause you for a second because it might be misleading to our viewers who are looking at this and seeing documents marked classified linked to Biden. That's an image of the Mar-a-Lago documents. We do not have Im the similar images of the Biden there, yeah. documents. Sorry, Jessica, I just want to make sure that that's, that that's clear for our viewers. Well, no, and it, an important caveat, right, and to exactly what we were talking about, which is important differences between the two cases. I think what it boils down to is the difference between cooperation and obstruction. When it comes to the Trump scenario, we have a president who has claimed he declassified the information. He claimed that he owned these documents. He claimed executive privilege over these documents. He was asked over and over again for these documents. That makes it a completely different scenario. The similarities are that we have two presidents and we have two situations involving classified documents. The scale and the scope and the knowledge that is involved in these cases could not be more different at this point. Thanks for walking us through all of that. Jessica Levinson, always great to see you.